What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast coming to you right after the Atlanta Falcons secured a 27 to 20 victory over the New York Jets. It was dramatic there at the end, as the Falcons are known to do. And uh, it was interesting in the way that they were able to close this one out. Tori McElhaney, AtlantaFalcons.com, beat reporter and analyst. What was your main takeaway from the second Falcons victory of this 2021 season? Well, Scott, I think it was actually what you wrote about post game was my biggest takeaway was that when you look at what the Falcons did last week against Washington, comparing it to what they did this week against the Jets, they actually did close it out. There was a really solid finish offensively that really put this game away that they didn't have against Washington and needed against Washington. So that to me was, was one of the biggest moments of the game and it, I think it meant the most to kind of where this team is now going into the bye week and then uh and then Chris Rim our long form features reporter you spent a lot of time with Kyle Pitts and really got to know him as the person this game was I don't know if it's a breakout game for him but it was a big one uh nonetheless what was your main takeaway from what the number four overall pick was able to get done and his impact on this game and on this team in, in the victory well, I think my main takeaway was, you know, when good players get the ball, you know, you know, great things happen. He got his most targets this this year. And, you know, I, I thought the Jets would have done some different things in terms of because uh, Calvin and Russell were out. I thought they would have maybe tried double team him more in the way the Jets try to take away Calvin in that game. I thought they would try to do that with Kyle. But, you know, he was one on one in the end zone with the defensive lineman and then. Um, on the, I think the 40 yard catch, he kind of just ran down the seam in the middle of the field. So, so I thought it, it was, it was, it was pretty easy for him today. And um, another takeaway for me that I wanted to mention too earlier was look at what happens when Matt Ryan, you know, is protected is when, when yeah. <laughs> he True. Looks, a great point. Yeah. <laughs> when he's not sacked. Yeah. <laughs> when he's not, when, when Matt Ryan is not being pressured, he's, he's still a great quarterback. He, he still, he shows you, you know, why he won that MVP. And I think today was a prime example of who Matt Ryan is. And we're going to talk about all that and more on the Falcons final whistle podcast, as we do every single episode, breaking these, break, breaking this thing down. If I can say that right over the course of four quarters, Starting with Kyle Pitt's big day, we are going to go into detail about that final and decisive offensive drive. We're also going to ask about some unsung heroes, some MVPs not named Ryan Pitts or Patterson. And we are going to talk about that feel-good feeling heading into the bye week and how important this win was for the psyche of this team, where we are going to address all that and more here on the final Falcons Final Whistle podcast, which is brought to you by Microsoft 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like, you know, the Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn about all the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And when we come back, we're, we're going to bang the sound effect and get started with the first quarter. We're getting started here on the first quarter of the Falcons final whistle podcast. We're going to have five minutes to break down number four overall pick Kyle Pitts's day where he had nine receptions for 119 yards, a touchdown, that huge 39 yard catch that really jump started the final and decisive offensive drive. And he did all that on 10 targets. Uh, he was dominant and effective early and it was really impressive to see everything that he was able to do. Chris, you've already kind of talked about Kyle Pitts a little bit, but could you sense early on that maybe a special game was in the making here? Was it something that that you could kind of pick out even on that first drive or in the first quarter? Yeah, I think there are kind of two sides to it coming in because you think, okay, number one and number two wide receivers are out. Kyle should automatically have a big game, but also – they're going to take Kyle out of the game. So, you know, my friends were asking me, should I start Kyle in fantasy or the <laughs> second third? And I, I was kind of torn because, like I said, you don't know if they're going to really focus on taking him out the game or if he is going to have that big game like like we saw today. And obviously it was the latter. Um, like I said earlier, I think I think what we thought the Jets were going to do in terms of focus, focusing on him or double teaming him or even having, you know, someone low and high on him, it, it wasn't there today. And um, I thought, you know, he got more targets than he's got all season. And they were also, you know, a lot more open. 
So yeah, his, his, his performance was, was not, I wouldn't say it was, ex, it was expected, but you know, I thought, I thought it could go one or two extremes and, and it went the good, the good one for him. And maybe a note to the jets is when you're close to the goal line, don't cover him with the defensive lineman. I, I mean, just a thought. I don't yeah. know. Uh, that, that seemed like a mismatch that they were taking advantage of. Uh, Tori, let, let's jump to the end here. That, that fourth quarter catch the 39 yarder, I believe, uh, what did that do to the final drive, given how much was at stake there? Uh, Matt Ryan talked a lot about finding a good look and it being a good play call from Arthur Smith. But what was your immediate reaction to it? And what do you think that that particular play meant uh, in the grand scheme? I mean, I think that Matt Ryan said it best when he called it the jump start that the Falcons offense needed in that moment. Because I think when you look back to last game against Washington it was a jump start that they didn't have uh they didn't have that moment where it was like where it really got the offense going and you always hear Matt Ryan especially talk about getting that first first down and and sometimes how difficult that is that once you get on a roll it's easier for first down to, to come by first downs and so I think the fact that they were able to go out and you know Matt Ryan said kudos to Arthur Smith for the play call and then also for Kyle Pitts on the execution side of it, but to be able to go and do that on first down and pick up, I mean, really almost like flip the field to, to go down on the other side of, of, of midfield was really, really something that I thought the Falcons needed. And I think it was, I don't want to say it's the reason that they got in the end zone, but it makes things a lot easier when you can get 39 yards on, on your first shot downfield to Kyle Pitts in that moment. So that's kind of what I thought of, of that specific moment. It was a moment that I, I look at as being one of the key moments of the game. And Tori, you, you, you wrote extensively about Kyle Pitts in your post game, Tori's takeaways column. Uh, give fans a, a, a preview of what you were saying there that maybe this is the beginning of the, of the Kyle Pitts era. Yeah, so I, I think there were so many questions coming into this game about exactly what the Falcons pass game was going to look like without Calvin Ridley, without Russell Gage, and going off of what Chris was saying, you know, we didn't know how the Jets were really going to play Kyle Pitts, and so the fact that we're sitting there kind of watching Kyle Pitts pick this secondary apart, was it, it was very... I, I wrote this, and I really meant it. Like, as I'm sitting there watching Kyle Pitts do what he did today... I really felt like this is a game that we will one day maybe look back on and be like, that's the example of what Kyle Pitts can really be in this league. And I think what he can do in this offense and why you go out and get him at number four was so he can have games like today. And I think that was what I really hung on to the most when I was going through this, my post game takeaways was really looking at like, this is the performance that you've been waiting for from Kyle Pitts. Since the moment that his name was called on, on the first day of the draft, this is what you've been wanting, this type of production. And so that's really what I kind of dove into post game. And it, I think if you're Falcons fans, you're really excited that you finally got to see this from Kyle Pitts. Yeah, he's, he's just such a dominant player. And even on his touchdown, going through with the Chris Rim timeline as we speak, and the quote was, the sun was in my eyes. I didn't even think I was going to catch it. Uh, he, he still caught it. He still found a way that despite the Falcons being without so many pass catchers that they were able to, that he was able to get the job done, create separation and make huge plays for this team. I do agree with you, Tori. I, I think this, this could be a real landmark game for him. Uh, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how he and the Falcons continue to use his skill set moving forward and take advantage uh, of his physical gifts and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. And let's get started on the second quarter, talking about that final and pivotal offensive drive where with the Atlanta Falcons really secured this victory. And it looked very similar to what happened last week because the Falcons lead got cut down to a critical level. And then they had an offensive series and against Washington, they went run, run, screen, and went nowhere. They punted. Washington came back and eventually won that game. This drive went markedly different. The Atlanta Falcons went 75 yards on nine plays over the course of four minutes and 36 seconds to really reassert themselves and do what good offenses do is that they are closers. 
They can finish games by playing keep away. Everything that you want to happen from an offense perspective late in a game when you have a lead, the Falcons were able to do. We talked a little bit, Tori, about that Kyle Pitts play, but maybe just generally speaking, what did you think of Arthur Smith's role in this particular offensive drive and how the Falcons were able to execute it? Yeah, I think something that I really hung on to post game was when Arthur Smith and I'm going to read the quote because I thought it was really good. He was asked about, you know, that final drive and he said, we're not going to sit here and play into our fears. I was pissed at myself from last week. The worst thing, I'll probably make plenty of mistakes, but I'll try not to make the same mistake twice. We're not going to live in our fears. We'll be aggressive when we need to be. And ha- and we had good blocking up front. And I think that quote where he's talking about not living in your fears and not making the same mistakes twice was really impactful when I'm looking at that final drive and being able to be like, okay, like we're talking about a first year head coach that's learning as he goes along too. And it wasn't a situation where um, you know, people, I think criticized him a lot last week where they were talking how he was too conservative in, in that moment that we were talking about in the fourth quarter against Washington, tossing the ball up to Kyle Pitts for a 39 yard gain is not conservative. And I think, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I think that's where he's talking about, like, we're not going to just kind of sit back and make the same mistake again that we made last week. And so for his role in this, I think, it, and Matt Ryan was very complimentary of him and, and was like, it was a good play call. It was him seeing where the safeties were and seeing that he could kind of go over the top of them. Um, so when I'm thinking about Arthur Smith's role in this, it, it, that's what I kind of cling to. And I thought that quote was really, really telling to kind of how Arthur Smith took the Washington loss and, and reevaluated what he was doing to kind of jump start this offense in the fourth quarter against the Jets and it paid off yeah and I think and I think when we when we talk about his role that that's really all you can ask for especially in, in a first year coach to see in real time him learning from a mistake that he admit, admitted that that he made last week I don't think everyone um, thought it was a mistake I guess he evaluated himself after and and viewed his decision making last week as a mistake and could have been you know more aggressive and you're seeing in real time this week in, a, in the same situation, Arthur Smith, you know, has a much different play, play call, much more aggressive play call, and it works. And then he admits, you know, post game that, you know, this this was a decision I made based off what I learned. And I think it's good for your first year coach to be, you know, candid and honest in that way. Um, and for, for fans to see that, you know, he's evolving too, like Tori said. Yeah, and it's that's kind of a defining characteristic of this early part of the season is their willingness to be accountable and critical and learn and try to progress in big and in little ways. And who knows that this team may lose more than it wins. Right. But are, are they willing to progress? Are they willing to challenge themselves? Are they willing to do different? Everything that we're talking about, Arthur Smith, I think that we can apply to the veteran leadership here and that, they, they just keep finding little ways to get a little bit better. But on the road to progress, you stumble and you fall, right? And you get scabs and things like that. Those things happen. But are you going to get, are you going to keep walking? Um, and I think that that's what this team does a good job of to this point, even if they're consistently inconsistent and maybe maddening to fans. And I think that when you look at it, right, as we have 30 seconds left here, it is that now we have, three close contests, two, they performed well in the clutch one. They didn't, are we still learning about this team? And uh, do we need more evidence to see if they're good finishers or not? Yeah. I mean, I I think so. I think, I think you still, still need more evidence, Uh, especially I think again, the the teams that they finished, that they finished against are, are the, well, the giants are playing now they're one and three, the jets are now one and four. I think seeing them maybe finish against a a team with a better record or, you know, a more accomplished team, I think then we would learn more about their finishing, you know, aspect. Yeah. And uh, we're going to move right along to the, to the third quarter right here, where we're going to talk about some unsung heroes from this victory. And we're on to quarter number three, where we're going to talk about some unsung heroes, some MVPs from the Falcons victory, but I'm going to set some guidelines. Number one, you can't pick Matt Ryan. Number two, you can't pick Kyle Pitts. Number three, you can't pick Mr. Patterson. So if we take away all the easy and obvious ones here, now we're going to have to put on our thinking caps. And thank goodness for the pause button, because it did actually give us a chance to evaluate where we wanted to go with this one. 
Uh, so Tori, you're up first. I guess you could technically steal anybody's because you have the floor. Who is your unsung hero, your, uh, your underrated MVP from this one? I really liked the progress that I saw from this offensive line. I think that after week one, week two, where it's been really tough to kind of find good things to say about this offensive line. I feel like we're to the point now where they have put together two really good performances against Washington and then also against the Jets today. I was very, I mean, they didn't give up a sack uh, against this Jets defensive front that we heard so much about coming in. And, and Arthur Smith, I mean, y'all know, like we, we sit and we talk to Arthur Smith quite a bit throughout the week. He's not really one to give compliments where like a compliment isn't due. And so the fact that he was talking a lot about this Jets defensive line and their coordinated rush attacks and how, how good they were. And how, I really like hung on to that. And I thought this offensive line did very, very well, uh, not giving up a sack, but also getting a good push up front to run the ball. I thought Mike Davis looked, it looked as good as we've seen him look. And it was because they were getting him to that second level on a, on a few runs. And so um, all of that to say that the, the, the offensive line, it's not sexy to talk about the offensive line and people don't like talking about offensive line play, but I did think that they played fairly well today. I think that's a huge step in the right direction for this unit as a whole, because as Chris brought up earlier, what an absolute shock. Matt Ryan's a pretty good quarterback when he has time to throw. Uh, the man's on a bit of a roll, but we're not talking about him right now, Scott. Don't go into that digression. I'm now talking to myself, not you guys. A little bit, uh, but Chris, uh, who first came to mind uh, when you thought about unsung heroes here? Yeah, for me, it was, it was Jalen Hawkins, and that I, I kind of wrote about him. He was featured in my story for LandonFalcons.com about the defense stepping up as a whole because Dean Pease earlier in the week he he always is pretty animated in his pressers, but this week he was it and he was in the NBA. He was a he was a rebounder at the podium. He was you know, <laughs> Clint Capella or something. He was motioning in his hands. He was showing the the media members how to how to rebound. And I wasn't there, but I watched the video. And he 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 uh he's rebound showing him how to rebound. He's comparing this to the defensive backs because last week in Washington he said that the DBs weren't aggressive enough to the ball. And, and we saw that specifically with the touchdown um, from Terry McLaurin where the ball floated in the air for what seemed like forever. And the, the DBs didn't attack it. And Jalen Hawkins today, um, and Keelan Cole was running like a comeback route. He read the route and just launched his entire body like a rebounder to get the ball. Um, you know, he wasn't vertical, he's horizontal. So maybe not like a rebounder, but, and he, and he got the interception and did exactly what, you know, Dean Pease talked about during the week. So he, he, he was my MVP in terms of, you know, getting his first start um, and getting his first career interception and, and just, just playing well. I think I think the whole secondary played well, you know, being marred by injury. But he stood out to me because of that interception. But there are also guys who are making plays, too. Yeah. And when I look at this group of tight ends as a whole, right, we all expected Kyle Pitts to be a featured player and Hayden Hurst to be a featured player without Russell Gage, without Calvin Ridley. But everybody forgets about the throwback dinosaur, whether he likes that nickname or not. Uh, I've known him long enough that I don't care. Uh, Lee had another really solid game all around. Three receptions for 30 yards, including a 22-yarder where he was wide open. And I think people forget that he can catch and he can turn up field and you don't want to see his shoulder pads go down when he's rumbling towards you. But it's it just, it's just, it's another wrinkle to this offense that does have a lot of skilled players that can make plays. And it was on a day that we haven't been terribly critical of too many, but let's be honest, the wide receiver position, those playing a few too many drops for my liking. I think that's a fair and accurate thing to say, but the tight ends really came to the rescue here. I think that includes Lee Smith. And since we have about a minute left, too, I'm pouring over the, the box score here. And um, Ade Ogundeji, right, with a sack, really kind of yeah. showed up uh, a little bit. That, that, like, that second wave um, of this young group of rookies, uh, you, uh, you have him, you have – we had a Richie Grant sighting. Oh, yeah. Uh, Darren Hall play. Any other rookies stand out um, uh, to you guys? I mean, those are the guys that I think of. It's like Richie, Ade, Darren Hall – you, we've seen what Avery Williams has been able to do. It was unfortunate that he wasn't able to play today. We saw obviously what Kyle Pitts was able to do, Jalen Mayfield. I mean, this is 
very much a, a, a rookie class that this game was huge for all, for all of their developments. Uh, so many of them had key moments in the game that I thought we're going to look back on and be like, that's really something that you wanted to see from this group. Yeah, and uh, I just think that was so key to have young guys show up. We didn't hear Jalen Mayfield's name, probably a good thing, uh, which means maybe that he was better along that offensive line as we wrap up quarter number three. Man, the Falcons took a long flight to go play the Jets. It was not a two and a half hour trip up to the Big Apple. It was all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to London to go play the Jets. They come back with a whip, come back with a victory. And so many guys said that even though it's a long ass flight, uh, direct quote, direct quote, long direct ass quote, flight. It's yeah. not me swearing and changing our our, our G rating. Uh, <laughs> It's a direct quote, and it is the, the truth as the Falcons head into the bye week with a better feeling, especially after what happened against Washington. Tori, how important was this win for the psyche of this team? Very important. I, I remember, Scott, you and I, we did a great debate a couple of weeks ago before we went into this three-game slate where you had both New York teams and Washington, and I remember you asking me, you know, this team hasn't won yet, but is it possible that they come out with a few wins after this three games like for the bye week and, and what's reasonable and, and what do we think? And I said, I was like, if they can win two of the three. I'm okay with them going into the bye week being two and three. Uh, I kind of still believe that, you know, they had a chance to win that Washington game. And I think that Washington game really stings more than any of the other losses. Um, so, so that is unfortunate to be, to, to kind of think that you could have been three and two instead of two and three going into the bye week and, but can't change anything about that. And, and I think it is good that they go into this bye week feeling a bit more confident about the way that they played, not just that they won the game, but being able to take things from the game, whether it's the run game, whether it's Kyle Pitts's day, whether it's, you know, guys the defense stepping up in key moments I mean you can take actual things from this game and kind of build upon them and and I think that's really really important for this team that's gonna have it tough coming out of the bye week and for me I think it's I think it's important the way they won not just that they won you know this was a great win um on all I guess the I guess from special teams um there was a couple challenge there's a couple challenges there on that on that longer return but I, I feel like as I feel like as a, as a whole, this was a great win, especially when you consider the amount of people who are out injured or, or not playing. I think they should feel really great. The fact that Kyle Pitts had his his coming out party that, you know, the, the D line performed, the rookies got their shot and they played well. Um, you know, you know, these guys can play and show up when needed. And and then you get into a bye week where you'll have guys who are rested and hopefully recover to come back in the next week or or, or a couple weeks. And um they should feel good about about where they are as a team and know that they they let one get away from them and and that you know i think they they should be feeling really good heading into the bye hey, chris i, I kind of want to build on what you were saying there i, I think it's it's a really good point that it's not just that they won it's how they won especially after a week where there were so many ready made excuses for a loss right no calvin you just lost isaiah oliver who had all the good feel story about him Russ Gage isn't back. Marla Davidson isn't back. You got to travel. You give up a home game to travel across the, you know, across an ocean to go play another game at, at 930 AM Eastern. You could have picked your excuse for why they weren't able to perform and they would have been sitting there at one and three. Uh, and maybe a team of lesser character would have said, why us boy, did we get screwed? Right. They didn't say that. And I think that has been evident. That's the thing that impresses me most. This team is very flawed. It has a lot of holes and makes a lot of mistakes. But the fact that they just, they just take punches, but they just keep swinging. They may not be connecting, but they keep swinging and they keep trying. I really like that about the character of this team. I think that makes me want to follow them more, even if I weren't getting paid to do so. I just think that it's important to me to see that type of characteristic. It may not equate to a lot of wins necessarily, but I think it says something uh, about the players that they have there and could provide a, a good foundation as we head forward. So, yeah, I mean, I think that really does it here. We have taken 
this game, this incredibly dramatic game, and uh, kind of broken it down for you guys over the course of four quarters. Thank you so much for hopping in. You guys know what to do at this point, right? Rate, preferably five stars. Review with lots of glowing things about how good of a podcaster I am. And subscribe on iTunes, Spotify. Go to YouTube, man. Uh, subscribe to the Falcons page where you can always get this podcast and lots of other cool stuff, man. And obviously stay tuned to atlantafalcons.com. Always good and fun content coming your way. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will take a break for the bye and be at you after the Falcons play the Dolphins in two weeks. <laughs>